Hey y'all, this is Amanda with She's a Mad Gardener. I'm out on the front porch today. I just got back from my vacation. I'm feeling fabulous. Um, I had a great time touring my garden after being gone for five days. Um, it's amazing how much occurred while I was gone. Daffodils are blooming like crazy. I'll show you a couple in this video. Um, a lot is coming up. And one of the things that is coming up right now are my mums, my chrysanthemums. Mums is a short, shorter version of the word chrysanthemums. And so today I wanted to talk about five different tips for taking care of mums. Now, a lot of y'all might be going mums, it's spring, Amanda. It's not fall. Why are we talking about mums? Well, I don't think a lot of people realize that if you have mums planted in your landscape, uh, that you can get multiple bloom cycles out of them. I have mums planted in my uh, landscape and I get three bloom cycles per year for them. I typically get a round of blooms at the end of April and then I trim them all back and I get another round during the summer and I trim them all back and then I get um, another round at the end of our uh, into fall. So you can get a lot of bang for your buck out of mums just if you follow a few tips um, to keep them going, keep them happy in your own landscape. Okay, tip number one, when you are buying mums, make sure you buy mums that have closed buds. It can be really exciting to get to the nursery and find these big, beautiful yellow blooms, burgundy blooms, rust orange blooms, just covering these plants. And it gets super exciting, like, oh, I wanna bring that one home. I have instant colors, me fabulous. Don't buy those, don't buy those. Those have already bloomed. They are, you know, within weeks of being done and then they're gonna be trimmed back. Go ahead and buy the plants where the blooms have not bloomed, where they're closed tightly, ready to go you're gonna get more for your money over time with those. So make sure that you have closed blooms so that you can bring them home, take care of them, have them bloom and enjoy them longer. Tip number two for taking care of mums. If you are planning to have your mums in a pot, try to avoid just sticking the store-bought pot in one of your pots. Be sure to repot your mums. Repot them with great potting mix. Make sure to add in some type of fertilizer. I like Plant Tone by Espoma, but put something in there. Make sure you repot them into different pots. If you just take the store-bought pot and just stick it in one of your pots, yeah, it'll last a little bit, but it's gonna last a whole lot longer if you make room for the roots to grow and stretch and if you give it fertilizer. So repot your mums. Now, if you are not planning to put your pots at your, <laughs> you're not planning to put your mums in a pot, but you're gonna be putting them in the ground, that is fabulous as well. Here in my area, which is zone 8A, mums are perennial here. They die all the way back during the winter and then they come back in the spring. I make sure to put them in an area that gets six plus hours of sun. I make sure to add um, fertilizer when I'm planting and then to also fertilize them throughout the year. They also do love a liquid fertilizer as well. And that brings me into tip number four. Make sure you pinch back and cut back your months, okay? Now, pinch back makes you wonder like, what, what are we pinching back? Once you get a bloom and it has lived past its prime, then you can just come with your fingers and just pull that off. Every time you pinch back a bloom, it's going to encourage more growth and more blooms from the month. Now. If you're someone like me, I don't want to go pinch individual blooms where there's hundreds and hundreds because my mums over the years, I've had them in three years and they get, they're massive, they're massive. And so what I like to do is I like to wait through one bloom cycle, that's when all the blooms come up and then they start to brown and not look so fabulous. And I like to come and trim the whole plant by back by one third. So if my plant is this tall and I'm gonna trim it back by one third, 
I'm gonna trim it back by about that much. It takes off all um, the spent blooms and it rejuvenates the plant so that it can come back and give me a whole nother round of blooms. Like I said before, I'm in zone 8A and my mums tend to give me three bloom cycles. They give me one at the end of April going into May, then I'll come back and trim them up. They'll give me another round during the summer, then I'll come back and trim them up. I always make sure I trim them up probably about the first or second week in August, and then they give me another beautiful bloom cycle in the fall. All right, and tip number five for caring for mums, and this one might be a surprising one for you all, but you can propagate mums. Yeah, that's what I say. You can totally propagate mums, and this will be a video that I'll be putting out soon, but you can cut back the stems and you can leave a node area. That's where two leaves come together on the stem. Pull off your leaves, use a little bit of rooting hormone and plant it directly in soil and care for it. And you can create more mums off of your base plant. It's an easy way to get more bang for your buck. Um, I also like to do this with mums that I might purchase from the grocery store for um, floral arrangements. Um, I like to go back in and I like to trim the stems and see what I can get going from those. Typically with those stems, I'll trim them back and I'll cut off the blooms and I'll cut off the leaves and I'll leave just the nodes and I'll put them in water and I'll propagate them through water and then I'll plant them once they have some roots showing up. But yes, that is your fifth tip to propagate mums. Now, A lot of people struggle with mums because they think of them as fall blooms. I did want to point out that in my landscape, I have planted colors that I feel are appropriate for year round. So I have mums that are planted and they are white and they are yellow. I do not have any rust orange, burgundy, deep purple, anything like that. Anything that lends itself towards fall, I don't have that um, planted in my regular landscape. Now I will come and pop some of those in during the fall, but they get pulled out at the end of the fall. I always keep my white ones and my yellow ones because they look fabulous in the spring, they look fabulous in the summer, and they look fabulous in the fall. In the fall, I love to come back when all my mums are in full bloom, and I love to tuck in large pumpkins and squash and things along those lines. The cheapest place I've ever found for um, pumpkins has been Aldi's, um, and you can get some very large pumpkins for um, less than $4, which actually I think this year I got them for $2.99, and they were big, massive pumpkins. So I love to feed in a lot of pumpkins into my landscape at fall, but a lot of people just think of fall um, mums. They can be beautiful in the spring and they can be beautiful during the summer. Okay, a couple of things about mums to be aware of. This is some bonus information. They do um, tend to have aphid issues um, or powdery mildew issues, both of which are fairly easy, tr easily treated. I've never had such an infestation of aphids on any particular mom that it's been that much of an issue. I usually just cut out the areas where the aphids are if it's not taken over the whole plant, and then I treat it. Um, same thing with powdery mildew. I did have one plant that got it a couple of years ago, had powdery mildew pretty bad on the mom, and I just cut the mom down to the ground and then treated it and it came back. So it was fabulous. Mums are pretty versatile. They're very hardy in my opinion. Um, they can take a beating. I'm gonna show you what my mums look like right now in my landscape. And that is after some crazy weather here in Texas, but they're doing beautifully. You'll be able to see all the dead sticks and then you'll be able to see all the new growth. Okay, these are my mums currently in my yard. You can see all the dead sticks from our stems from before. They're pretty brittle on those part. And this is all new growth coming from the base of the plant. So you do not have to leave um, all these dead sticks in there. You can trim them back. I typically leave about six inches. And um, the reason I do that is so that I can remember where my mums are. That is a common problem for me. I can't remember what I planted where. So there's a couple right there. Both of those are yellow and white. I have some in this area that have really kind of spread out. I think some of the stems ended up getting buried underground and they've spread themselves out. So they take up this whole area. You can even see them back behind there, behind this helleborus. Yep. 
you can see some more coming back there this guy is a massive yellow one it typically gets almost two feet high and then I also have and then I also have some tucked back behind there you can see behind some of my daffodils a couple back there it always seems that once my daffodils are really starting to die back then these come in look at these daffodils they're fabulous aren't they so happy oh such joy check out a few more varieties of daffodils coming up i don't remember what this guy is but he's pretty showed you my can can daffodils another one look at these guys so pretty these are large and one more variety over here of a peach tone super pretty thanks so much for joining me today i hope you guys enjoyed this kind of five best best tips for growing months um something that people don't usually think about it's not a favorite um plant or flower among a lot of people but i love it as a background base flower i love just a full, um, beautiful selection of whites or yellows in the background. And then things like my blue irises in front really pop off of that. So think about them not as, you know, a main like attraction for your garden, but more of a background shrub or flower for you guys to consider. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you are new to my channel, make sure you hit that notification button as well. So you know, when my latest videos are updated and as always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.